dear students after studying this module you shall be able to know about some unconventional types of poisons illustrations of certain substances acting as poisons unsystematically and the toxicological details of various drugs and other poisons now students let us start with the introduction of this module while studying toxicology by and large the emphasis is given upon the stereotyped substances known having the poisonous nature but there are several unconventional substances present in the world which are not poison but their mode of administration dosage and the site of incompatibility makes them poison while discussing about such poisons it is very important to discuss about the mechanical poisons which are not poisons in the truest sense as these are not absorbed in the biological systems but these produce symptoms of irritants because of the mechanical action of their sharp angular edges and points thereby causing irritation of stomach and bowels due to contact these poisons are powdered glass pins or needles glass fibers chopped animal hair etc and are hence included under section 328 of indian penal code or ipc out of these materials the powdered glass has some medical legal importance the glass powder is used for destroying cattle that is in homicidal purposes but rarely found in suicidal poisoning it does not produce the desired effect if it is entangled in the mucus or food in the stomach similarly it will not have any effect if it is well powdered mechanical irritants intrinsically are not poisons and do not cause the toxic effects but can cause local irritation at the site of application for example glass powder can cause irritation of the gi tract or the gastrointestinal mucosa if ingested powdered glass diamond powder needles etc may cause pain in abdomen nausea and vomiting and may injure the tissues and thus cause bleeding if bleeding is considerable and acute death may occur due to hemorrhagic shock if bleeding is gradual and concealed example in malina may induce anemia weakness general debility etc similarly death may occur if the agents cause perforation of stomach or the intestines or the stomach lining also pieces of chopped hairs cause nausea vomiting and irritation in such cases the gastrointestinal tract mucosa may be exacerbated the fatal dose and fatal period for these types of exceptional toxicants are rather ambiguous due to their unknown mode of action now students we will study about the forensic issues generally poisoning due to these types of substances is either accidental or sometimes suicidal but its homicidal use has not been frequently observed as such imaginably the homicidal usage can be seen in maliciously killing of cattle but that is also obsolete due to hectic preparations and easy availability of other over the counter poisons for a moment sugar which is not a poison and which is used to enhance flavor or taste to a food product may act as a potent poison when taken in an excess amount in a more refined illustration insulin is a necessary drug for a diabetic patient but if it is injected to a healthy person or an healthy individual may cause his or her death in humans accidental ingestion of these types of poisons may occur with accidental mixing with food products such as jam jelly or the 
canned products etc. Circus artist may swallow glass particles while performing a stunt. These agents may also be used with an evil intention to cause ill health and death. Children having access to these substances may accidentally ingest them or may inhale them in the respiratory tract causing respiratory obstruction. Diamond powder administered internally is however a mythical poison. It is believed that the son of Sultan Bajazit of Turkey slayed his father by pouring an enormous quantity of powdered diamond in his father's food. In 1532, the doctors of Pope Clement VII administered him with 14 spoonfuls of powdered gems including diamond which resulted in death for the Pope. Many poisons of this category display their apparent toxic effect by inducing the allergic reaction to the body rather producing any toxic effect or toxicity of their own chemical or the biological nature. Next is the types of miscellaneous poisons. Here we first have the mechanical dust. Mechanical dust cannot be typecasted by a particular substance, but there can be a variety of perceivable substances which can cause toxic effects to the human body and some of the mechanical toxicants I will be discussing here in this module. First of all, we have the airborne contaminants. Airborne contaminants occur in the gaseous state in the form of gases and vapors or in the forms of aerosol also. In scientific expression, an aerosol is defined as an arrangement of particles suspended in a gaseous medium, commonly air in the perspective of occupational hygiene, it is typically air. Aerosols may occur in the form of airborne dust, sprays, mist, smokes and fumes also. In the occupational situation, all these forms may be significant because they relate to a wide range of occupational diseases. The airborne dust are of specific concern because they are well known to be related with the classical prevalent occupational lung diseases such as pneumoconosis as well as with the general intoxications such as lead poisoning specifically at higher levels of exposure. There is also an increasing curiosity in other dust associated diseases such as cancer, asthma, allergic alveolitis and irritation as well as a complete variety of the non-respiratory diseases which may occur at a much lower exposure level. Examples of the types of dust found in the work environment include mineral dust such as those containing free crystalline silica example quartz, coal and cement dust, metallic dust such as lead, cadmium, nickel and beryllium dust. Other chemical dust example many bulk chemicals and pesticides. Then organic and vegetable dust such as floor, wood, cotton and tea dust and pollens also. And lastly the biohazards such as viable particles, molds and spores. Next here in the list is the diamond dust. The term diamond originates from the Greek word adamas meaning undefeated or invincible. Remarkably its Aryan essence that is damn to tame or pacify is also the source of the expression madam. The adjective adamas was engaged to refer to the hardest substance recognized and turned out to be synonymous with the gem that is diamond. In reference to the toughness of this stone made of carbon, a chemical element essential to all life forms, in this it's the most concentrated form. Diamond dust is possibly the most awful poison in existence. If someone consumes diamond dust, the regular peristaltic motion of the digestive tract 
causes minute fragments of the world's hardest substance to embed themselves along the elementary canal. The natural motions of the inner body causing them to work deeper and deeper and the internal organs are pierced and shredded. Next is glass dust. The powdered glass and diamond dust does not act as a poison as they are not absorbed in the blood but they do act mechanically causing irritation of the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract. Their fatal period as well as their fatal doses are uncertain. The faint shadow of glass particles on x-ray due to presence of the radio opaque silica helps in its diagnosis. Their related signs and symptoms include burning pain in mouth, throat, stomach and intestines, nausea, vomiting and constipation. Rarely, diarrhea with tenesmus and bloody stools also occur. Death may result from shock following perforation of the stomach or the intestines by the sharp glass fragments. The glass fragments picked up from the stomach contents or the materials adhere to the persistent mucus section or the fecal matter that are washed with water and then with ether. Alternatively, the contents of the bowel or the ejection can be destroyed by concentrated hydrochloric acid and potassium chlorate also. The organic matter passes into the solution and the glass is left as fragments. In cases of suspected homicidal poisoning by glass, the organs are removed and they should not be preserved in glass containers. The particles are then noticed by naked eye, magnifying glass and then under the microscope as the glass fragment should appear as transparent and amorphous particle. The picked up particles are melted in a spatula on flame and the molten material is touched with the thick platinum wire and the wire is then pulled up. A glass thread is formed. Next is the animal hairs. Normally hairs of the pet animal do not produce poisoning as such. Rather they may induce allergic reactions which may lead to serious hyperactivity of the biological system. However some animals especially insects causing irritating hairs known as urticating hairs or bristles can produce stinging effects and if those bristles somehow reaches the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract they may produce irritating effect resulting in ulcers and bleeding internally. Uticating hairs are seen in caterpillars and some species of spiders like Talentera among other animals. Next I will explain about the plant pollens. Trees, grasses and weeds are all responsible to contributing factors of the airborne pollen. Glass species Poa and Festuca are major contributors along with the pollens from several weed genera in the Astricaceae, example mugwort, Artemisia vulgaris and ragweed, Ambriosa sp. Toxic effects on humans can range from simple hay fever caused by the exposure to plant pollens all the way to serious systematic reactions caused by the ingestion of the specific plants. Hay fever or rhinitis from inhalation of the plant pollens is a seasonal problem for many individuals. The common denominator in the various pollen allergens is the conserved binding domain known as profiling which is also found in Burke pollen. Asthma and rhinitis have been linked to individuals who are exposed to Cascara sagrada that is Ramnus persiana or workers in greenhouses in which bell papers are growing. Next is glue sniffing. These substances or the glues are customarily 
volatile hydrocarbons which are used as solvents, propellants, thinners and fuels. The hydrocarbon is characteristically inhaled by pouring into a container for sniffing, a cloth or sock for huffing or a plastic or paper bag for bagging. Abusers often begin with sniffing that is the lower concentrations of gluor adhesives and progress subsequently to huffing and bagging that is the higher level of exposure. The most commonly abused inhalants include toluene from paints and glues, petrol, butane from cigarette lighter fluids, butyl and isobutyl nitrate and halogenated hydrocarbons from typewriter correction fluids, propellant and dry cleaning fluids. Inhalation of volatile substances produces intoxicating effects rapidly also. They are well absorbed through the lungs and distributed equally or quickly to the central nervous system. One or two huffs will begin to intoxicate the user within seconds and the effects usually last for several hours. Chronic users can maintain a prolonged high with periodic inhalations every few hours. Poisoning in the cases of glue sniffing results from inhalation of vapors and ingestion of liquid also. Ingestion of liquid is more hazardous due to low surface tension of the liquid. The liquid is aspirated into the respiratory tract by vomiting or eructation with resulting chemical peritonitis, secondary bacterial pneumonia and pulmonary edema. The last two that I have told you are the most serious consequence to aspiration. Death occurs within 16 to 18 hours. Next, we will study about the over-the-counter drugs. And first here, we will study about the analgesics. Drugs used to reduce or relieve pain are called as analgesics. Aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid is a white powder commonly used as an antipyretic and an analgesic. Most of the cases of overdose are suicidal in nature and a few may be accidental also. In some individuals, a small dose of aspirin can provoke a fatal hypersensitivity reaction. Another example of over-the-counter analgesic is acetaminophen or commonly known as paracetamol that we generally take as the prescribed medicine also. It is an analgesic and an antipyretic with the anti-inflammatory properties of aspirin for which it is time and again used as an alternative because of the lack of gastric irritation. Paracetamol poisoning is more common in children who have low hepatic gluconeroid conjugating ability. When a large dose is taken, it causes severe toxicity. Fatality is common with doses of more than 250 mg per kg. Paracetamol is a potent liver poison. Next, we will study about insulin poisoning. Death from parenteral administration is insulin is quite common. Fatal insulin toxicity can be accidental, suicidal and even homicidal also. Accidental fatalities are mostly medical mistakes resulting from misreading the label on the box or the container. Suicidal incidences by the use of insulin are also quite common. Insulin is inactive orally and has to be given parenterally for its hypoglycemic action. Next, we will study about antiseptics. Disinfectant and antiseptic such as mercury chloride and carbolic acid causes accidental poisoning also. Other antiseptic contains potassium permanganate which may be ingested by the children accidentally seeing as a syrup. Then we will study about the cough remedies. Codeine which is easily available for the counter 
in the form of antitussive preparations is being increasingly abused especially by college going youth codeine is slightly less depressant to the cortex and medullary centers but stimulates the spinal cord fatal dose of codeine is extremely variable as it depends on age and habit the usual blood concentration of codeine the truth fatal to an adult is about 1000 to 10000 micrograms per liter in cases of acute overdoses now students let us summarize this module there are several unconventional substances present in this world which are not poison but their mode of administration dosage and site of incompatibility makes them poison mechanical poisons are not absorbed in the biological systems but produces symptoms of irritants because of the mechanical action of their sharp angular edges and points thereby causing irritation of stomach and bowels due to their contact poisoning due to these types of substances is either accidental or sometimes suicidal but homicidal use has not commonly been frequently observed poisons like powdered glass pens or needles glass fibers chopped animal hairs etc are included in section 328 of ipc and are known as unwholesome poisons airborne dust are of particular concern because they are well known to be associated with the classical widespread occupational lung diseases such as pneumoconiosis as well as with the systemic intoxications such as lead poisoning especially at higher levels of exposure if someone consumes diamond dust the regular peristaltic motion of the digestive tract causes these minute fragments of the world's hardest substance that is diamond to embed themselves along the alimentary canal the natural motion of the inner body causing them to work deeper and deeper until your all the internal organs are perforated and ripped off some animals especially insects containing the irritating hairs known as urticating hairs or bristles which can produce stinging effects also and if those bristles somehow reaches the gastrointestinal tract they may produce irritating effects